The trouble with Wireshark is most people don't even consider it as a tool to use in the midst of network troubleshooting. So as I thought about how do I make a training around that, I thought, why don't I just show people how I use it? So let's just say I'm troubleshooting something. I don't know. I'm kind of making this up as I go. I'm going to start a capture and just start watching the data flow through. And this is where a lot of people bail because they're like, oh no, too much stuff. But that's another issue. So I'll go over to uh, Edge right here and I'm just going to go to Twitter just to get some network traffic that's there. Uh, let's go to, oh, Yahoo. <laughs> where did that come from? Yahoo. I haven't been there in like 15 years. So so I'm coming back here. I, I see now 8,000 some packets. And again, this is where a lot of people bail on Wireshark because they're like, too much data. What do I do? First thing that I do when I get all this data is I want to look for what I'm looking for. Usually I'm not opening Wireshark unless there's an issue. In this case, let's just say I was looking at the Twitter connection, right? I would go back to Wireshark and I would find where did that Twitter conversation begin? couple ways that I can do that. One, and the one that I like using most of the time is by using the DNS lookup. I'll look right there and go, okay, DNS looks like around packet 172 is where it did a standard query for twitter.com. Okay, so that's my starting point in my conversation. So as soon as I hit X and removes that DNS filter, I'm already at packet 172, which is where it looked up Twitter. Then I can find quickly after that where it tried to contact Twitter. This is the TCP three-way handshake, sin, sin, ack, ack. Ooh, this is actually going to be kind of fun. I'll, more on that in just a second. The other way that I can find things inside of here, just on a broad scale, is to do a string query. Frame contains, quote, Twitter, close quote. Hit the enter key, and I see every single packet where Twitter was involved. Again, in this case, it led me right to that DNS query is one of the first things. But I can also see right here is uh, it's, it's seeing Twitter in the name of the security certificate exchange. Again, my whole goal in doing this is to give myself a starting point to troll through those 9,000 some packets of data and go, okay, that's where I begin. So let's go back to that first DNS query right there where I got the IP address of Twitter. Scroll down a little bit because right after that, anytime you see a DNS query, the computer is trying to contact that. So you can be pretty much guaranteed that right after that, it's going to try and set up the TCP session. And that always starts with the TCP three-way handshake. <laughs> now it looks right here like my computer's got a stutter. It's like, uh, uh, hello, right? Because it's like since in uh, to the, from my computer right here, source IP address to the same destination. Well, a lot of times computers are trying to be a little bit more efficient. That is, they're trying to set up multiple TCP sessions to the same host at a time to get different types of traffic. <laughs> it's like it's like when my wife is talking to me and the kids are all like, blah, blah, blah. you know, she's con continuing the conversation and then she'll turn and be like, okay, okay, and she'll address them. I am not a multi-TCP stream. I'll be talking to my wife and one of the kids are talking. I'm like, stop, stop talking to me. I can't focus. Back to you. The question is, which conversation do I want to look at? Truth be told, I probably want to look at both, but the way that I can tell them apart is by this stream index right here. You see right here, stream seven? I click on this. Ah, stream eight. Okay, well, let's look at this. Okay, we're on stream eight right there. Back to stream seven. Okay, so stream seven. You, you guys looking at this right here, right? Stream index eight. So, so I go, okay, okay, I've got two simultaneous TCP conversations. Let's just grab the first one and I'll right click on this. I'll go conversation filter. Oh man, such, such a handy thing. Follow the conversation. If you want, if you want nothing else out of this, remember conversation filter. It helps you track down one conversation that's happening on the network. In this case, I'm going to say follow the TCP stream, but sometimes I also go right here and do follow the IPv4 conversation so I can see all the communication between those two IP addresses. But let's just look at this one session. So I'm looking right here. I've now zoned it down. Now I've got my three way handshake SYN, SYNAC, ACK. By the way, if you don't know network protocols, Wireshark will make you learn network protocols. And the biggest tip I can give you is be curious. See the conversation, be like, what's SYN, SYNAC, SYN, you know, Google, 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 just learn protocols this way. You'll gain so much from this. Brief side note. That's why I think a lot of people get frustrated with Wireshark is they're using it when everything's on fire and they don't have time to learn. And they're like, ah, what is all this junk? And they abandon it so quickly when the time to learn is when things aren't on fire. Again, be curious. What's going on with my conversation with Twitter? 
what I see right here is that it's doing a security certificate exchange. My client is sending a security hello message. It's going right here from the server side saying hello. It's doing a little key exchange to make sure that we can do uh, encryption between my computer and Twitter. So if I'm looking, I'm, I'm kind of scrolling down right here. Okay, this is, this is a pretty decent conversation. Other thing that I'm looking at is what is the length of all of this communication? 1514 is the maximum transmission unit of ethernet. So if I see a bunch of those frames, I go, okay, I happen to tap in to the stream that is the major data conversation. Whereas I might have tapped into another stream. Let's, let's look at the other one just for fun. Scroll back up that first sin, clear the filter. Let's click on the second sin right there. Right click, conversation filter, TCP. Ah, look at how short this one is. See, I'm scrolling up and down right there. This is probably just a security certificate exchange. I can see right here, SYN, SYN ACK, ACK. Got a few hellos, a little application data, but not much going on there. And this is where that TCP stream ends. So that tells me the bulk of the data exchange probably happened in that first TCP stream. I'll put that conversation filter back on. The next way I use Wireshark all the time is the header information. These are literally the headers of the OSI model layer one-ish, layer two with the MAC addresses from source to destination, layer three, IP addresses, source and destination, layer four, TCP information, source and destination, port number, and all the data therein. These can give us clues. Oh, and I should tell you that as I'm thinking about ways I use Twitter, Twi Twitter, <laughs> ways I use Wireshark. Wireshark is rarely a silver bullet where I'm like, da, bingo, that's it. I mean, like maybe one out of a hundred times that I use it where I'm like, bingo, that's exactly what's going on. Most of the time, Wireshark is just my Sherlock Holmes. I look and I go, whoa, it looks like, okay, that one's talking to that one. Okay, something's going on there. I'm going to go check out that host. It just gives me a clue as to where to look. Like, for instance, the security certificate exchange that we just saw, it may seem that, you know, the client sent and then the server never sent one back. I'd go... Well, that's funny. Let's go look at the server and look at the event logs on the server and try and figure out why it's not taking the SSL communication from the client. Okay, other ways that I use Wireshark. Quick protocol focus. The beauty of the display filters is it's freeform. You already saw DNS. I want to see what's going on with some DNS queries. ICMP, if I want to see what's going on with some ping messages that I'm sending. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know that was there. So somewhere, this is trying to ping me. Who? Who is that? Or it's actually not pinging me in this case. It's telling me that there's a destination that's unreachable using ICMP. That piques my curiosity right there going, why is it doing that? That just, just happened. And so th you see what I mean? That, that's where you're like, hmm, investigate. Show me all the TCP conversations. Show me all the UDP conversations that are going on. Again, zone in into the specific protocol. Look at that. My bedroom. My bedroom talks to us. Maybe I want to see all the communication coming from my bedroom. I would do a search for IP dot address equals equals 192.168.1.90 and foop. Oh, there's not much conversation there. I use this filter all the time to just zone into a specific IP address and say, show me everything from that guy. Or maybe I'm just looking at a specific port. TCP dot port might be equals equals 443 to show me all the SSL conversations that are happening on the network. And maybe I just want to see all the SSL conversations from the IP address. Oh, I just see one there in the list, 204.79.197.200, enter. When it comes to filter complexity, that's about as far as I go off the top of my head. I can build a lot more complex filters, but a lot of times use Wireshark's automated way of doing it. I most of the time zone into a specific IP address, specific port number, specific TCP streams at times, or a specific protocol. Last way that I use Wireshark is right here under statistics, conversations. A lot of times you just saw this is my home network and there was like a thousand packets within just a few seconds of opening this. You might have a span session going on where you're monitoring many different network ports all at the same time. And it doesn't take long for Wireshark to reach a million packets in a matter of seconds that are coming through. The conversations filter allow you to see all the conversations that are happening. And you can tune this and look by MAC address, by IP address, and so on and so forth. But if you're looking for a specific conversation, oh, no better way than the statistics place to see a lot of times who's sucking up all the bandwidth in our network. And it's kind of like if you, if you get into the network side, NetFlow, but much simpler. You can just look at the conversations and see, oh, looks like 
we'll say 40.114.54.223 is consuming a ton of bandwidth. Let's zone into that and create a filter around that one. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you can look at some of the examples I gave and use it in your own home or your own office environment. Ooh, careful with that. Some places don't like that and you might get fired. Don't do that. The best thing that you can do is open Wireshark and just tinker a little bit. Do, walk through the same examples that I just did, but with your own Twitter capture and see what you can find and what you can learn through this whole thing. Curiosity is your biggest ally in learning a tool like this. Well, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.